Uh, when we talk about inequalities, um, just as, out of curiosity, if I was to divide both of these sides by 2, by positive 2, that would make like 1.5 and 2.5? Is 1.5 still less than 2.5? What if I, so it didn't do that, what if I did, what if I subtracted 3 from both sides? So that would be 0, and that would be 2. Is 0 still less than 2? Yeah, pretty confident it is. What if I, instead of adding 3, what if I added, pick a number, any number? 75. 75, sure. So then this would be 78, and this would be 80, and is 78 still less than 80? I would think so. I'd rather have $80 than $78. But there's one operation we haven't done. And when we divide by a negative, actually, we're not going to divide this one by a negative. We're going to multiply this one by a negative. I changed my mind. Uh, pick a negative number that's pretty easy to multiply by. Two. Right. two. Negative two, and we're going to multiply by negative two. So what's three times negative two? Negative six. <laughs> and five times negative two is now if I was to write in the less than there, is negative six actually less than negative ten? No. No, so if we look think about the number line here. This is zero. I'll say this is negative six. Here's negative ten. Negative ten is way less than negative six. So when we multiply by a negative number, it seems like the direction of the inequality has to change. Okay. You want to see if the same thing is true over here if we divide by a negative number? What if I divide this one by negative 5? And then I have to divide that side by negative 5, because that's the rules of algebra. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. Negative 25 divided by, well, what's 25 divided by 5? Five. Five. So negative 25 divided by negative 5 is? 5. five. Positive 5. And negative 40 divided by negative 5 is? 8. eight. Now negative 25 is greater than negative 40, but is 5 greater than 8? No. No. So when you divide by that negative number, the only thing, the only difference between this and the algebra we've been doing is you just have to remember if you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, we have to change the sign, the direction of the sign. That's it. That's the only change. So Austin, you sit. Right behind John and Paige there. I'm going to need some notes. Alright, so the big change is that's it. That's the only difference between solving al algebraic equations and algebraic inequalities. Just got to make sure you flip that side if you divide by a negative only. So let's try solving a couple of these. So this was. So just we're going to solve then graph. So the graph is just the number line. That's all we need to do. So Tyson, what is negative 5.4 doing to m here? Uh, well, so what are we going to do to divide. get rid of it? We're going to divide both sides by negative 5.4. So that's just going to be m on this side, because that's just going to cancel that out. And 32.4 divided by negative 5.4. If you don't have a calculator handy, I think it's about negative 6. So I'll check that just in case I screwed up. It's negative 6. Now, what's the only thing we had to do, though? Did we divide by a negative number? Yes. Yes, so I have to change the direction of the sign. So instead of having greater than, now it's less than. So to graph this, I'm just going to do a number line. Negative 6 here. Remember, negative 5 is going to go here. Negative 7 is going to go here. 
open circle because it can't equal negative 6. And then which direction will my arrow go? Left or right? Yes. Sorry. It's hard when you're facing the other way. It's going to go this way. It's going to go to the left hand side. Done. That didn't seem so bad, did it? I didn't think so. 3.2x minus 1 uh, is less than 8.6. So what would you do first here, Georgia? Add one, perfect. And I add one to that side. So that just gets rid of it. So it's 3.2x less than 9.6. And now what would I do, Brooke? Exactly. It's three. Question for you. Would, Ian, would the inequality change directions? No, because I didn't divide by a negative number, so it's still going to be less than. And less than 3, this is really fast. 3, I like to put one number on each side just to help me out. Luke, open or close circle? Open because it can't be equal to, right? And then the direction it goes is left. All right, and then, so I just need to make a quick change on this one. I was brain dead. I made this last night and made this an equation. So we're just going to make a quick change. Just make this a less than or equal to. Didn't realize that until I printed it off this morning and I was like looking at it and I thought, oh, you made an equation. On an inequalities thing. Great job. Great job. Um, what would we have to do here? What uh, what what strategy? We did two strategies for this, remember? What was the what was one of them? Multiply by P on both sides. Multiply by P on both sides. And remember, does this does this part here make any difference for what we're doing? No, it just tells us P can't be zero, which is five. That makes sense. P can't be zero. You can't divide by zero doesn't change anything, so then that gets rid of that p, and I have 4.2 is less than or equal to 0 0.7 p. Did I need to change the, direct, the direction of the inequality there? No? Drew, why didn't I need to change the direction of the inequality? Did I multiply by a negative? So if I didn't multiply by a negative, I don't need to change it. Or divide by a negative. Now to solve this, I divide it by... Well, uh, if you didn't like decimals, remember we can multiply by 10 on both sides and get 42 is less than or equal to 7p, which is still legal because I haven't multiplied by a negative. And then could I just divide by 7? And still not changing that direction of that sign because I didn't divide by a negative. And what do you got? 42 divided by 7, I believe. 6. Yes. So it's less than or, or, sorry, P, now if you read it this way, you can read P is greater than or equal to 6. So quickly I'll draw my number line. I don't want to take a lot more time, a lot more of your time on this. 6, 7, and 5. Layton, those are open dots. Is it going to be open? Close. Close, because it's equal to, yeah. And then, which direction am I going to go, Noah? Towards the 7 or towards the 5? Seven. 7. 7, yeah. Easy way to tell if, you want, if you're having trouble figuring out which way that arrow needs to go, take a number, take one of these numbers and just try it in the inequality. So if you try 7 over here, is 7 greater than or equal to 6? Sure is. Or is 6 less than or equal to 7? Yes. Put 5 in for here. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? It is not. It is neither less than nor equal to. Okay, we're going to get... Uh, I just want to go through these ones because I know we struggle with lots of variables. I, it was clear. So, uh, to solve equations or inequalities, we must first rearrange the equations so all like terms are on the same size. So here I have 2.5x and negative 5.2 
is less than x, x plus 6.2. Um, what would you prefer to do first, Carson? Oh, because you want to add the 5.2 first? That is perfectly illegal. Now, remember, when you add the 5.2, it doesn't go with the x. So we'll have 2.5x is less than x plus 11.4. And Tyson, what, what would you do? To, so how would you get rid of this x here? I don't know. Well, picture the algebra tile that you can. We'd have two and a half algebra tiles on the left side. So yeah, we'd have to subtract x or add in a negative x, not divide by anything. So that gets rid of that, so I'll have less than. I still don't need to change the direction, so I still haven't divided by a negative. Still good. And what's two and a half? What's two point five minus one? Five x. To get rid of that one point five, now I divide by one point five. And this one, I honestly have no idea. I'm gonna bet something like seven point six. Seven point six. That's not what I would have bet. So we're not gonna graph that. We'll just solve it. Okay. Now, Ian, look at this one here. It's lots of trouble, isn't there? But can I simplify this equation to make it much nicer to solve? Yeah. You betcha. Uh, what would you do first, Ian? You could choose your own adventure. This is a. I have a question. Um, okay, yes. Can we just add like the x's and then we on each side to make it? Actually, that's what I'm going to suggest we do before we add. The, so we could add the 2.5 to both sides, but I'm going to suggest that well, let's just get everything together and let's see what we got. Okay? So I'm going to say I'm going to. So can I combine these two? Yeah. Because they're both x's and they're on the same side, so I can combine them. 4.2 minus 2.6. Anybody? Anybody? 6.8. Minus, minus, minus. It's 1.6, but... I hope you check that. 1.6? Yes? Okay. Pressure's off now. I didn't screw up that question. And then which ones can I combine on this side? I'll, use, I'll do some in purple. So I can combine this negative 0.4x with... It's positive 5.1x. So 5.1 minus 0.4, 4.7x. And I'll do blue for the last one. And I can combine these two negative numbers, negative 8.2 minus 2.5, so we're getting more negative, minus 10.7. Okay, so now we've got some choices to make. Ainsley, which what, what would you like to do here? So we add 10.7 to both sides? Okay, yeah, that works. Now, important to remember that when you add 10.7 to that left side, all you're going to get is 1.6x plus 10.7. Right, that doesn't change what we got there. Now, let's pick on John. Uh, John, what would you do next? Subtract 1.6x. I like that. I'm going to subtract 1.6x from both sides because that's the only way to get rid of a term entirely. Dividing is not going to help you. Either. In fact, dividing is almost illegal at this point because you have to divide everything by 1.6. It's not going to help you. And that still doesn't change. So, oh, yikes. Better do a better job of writing that. 10.7. 3.1x. And then finally, to solve it, we divide by 3.1, 3.1.
Grace, uh, you have the answer. So I see you calculating. What did you get for an answer? 3.45. And my final question, a follow-up for you, Grace. Would we have to switch the direction of the inequality here? Because we never divided or multiplied by a negative number, precisely. Um, so that's it. That's solving inequalities. We didn't do anything different that we've been doing, except now we just have to watch if we ever divide or multiply by a negative that you bring in. So uh, everyone have this down. Okay, you, just let me know when you're done there. So, uh, just I'll just do a quick one here. So say it was like negative two x plus uh, one. Let's make it easy. Uh, is less than negative four. When you do this, this does not qualify as multiplying by a negative. It's something that's in the equation already. The only time you have to change it is if you said instead of doing that, you said. So I said that was negative 4. I want to multiply both of these by negative 7 for some reason. Once you bring in, because we brought these in, you did that, or I did that. I did that. I brought them in from outside the equation. That's when the inequality will have to flip. Because I brought in the negative number. If it's in there already, don't worry about it. But if you do something to that negative number, so say you divided both sides by negative 2. Uh -oh. I'll just use the undo negative 4. So say I said, oh, I'll just go divided by negative 2, divided by negative 2. But because we did this, so that'll be x plus 1 on this side is greater than positive 2. We have to change it. So because whenever we do something involving multiplying or dividing by a negative, we have to change that job. If you're to do like multiply by negative numbers like three times, would you have to switch it three times then? <laughs> yes, but I promise that we won't have that many negative numbers. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. Now I just want to stop this recording.